This is a quasar, one of the most powerful entities in the known universe. It's a supermassive black hole, two billion times the mass of our sun, feeding at the center of a distant galaxy. It shreds anything caught in its wake. Any matter trapped orbiting it forms an accretion disk so hot that it glows thousands of times brighter than a galaxy. If this quasar was 30 light years from Earth, its brightness would rival that of our sun. And if it were that close, we wouldn't live long enough to appreciate it either. Yet despite its power and magnificence, this quasar is a relic, a beast from long ago. Born during the early universe, it's taken over 10 billion years for its light to reach us. And if we could see it today, it would likely be far more subdued than this. Much more like our own supermassive black hole, Sagittarius A star, sitting at the centre of the Milky Way galaxy. In fact, as we've explored the distant regions of space, we've come to realise that almost all galaxies in the universe have a supermassive black hole at their centre, with many having been quasars at some point in the past. We still don't fully understand their role in the development of our growing universe. They are capable of utterly immense destruction, but they might also play a pivotal role in creation. Due to a process we still can't explain, quasars eject some of the matter in their accretion disks at near light speed, interstellar jets that extend hundreds of thousands of light years into space. Like cosmic water fountains, they take material from the core of their galaxy and fire it into outer space, seeding the universe with gas and elements so that new stars and maybe even planets can form. Without them, galaxies would certainly not be what they are today. And there's a good chance that without them, we might not be here either. They are some of the most remarkable and extreme products of the laws of nature. And we are here to learn their story. The story of the Quasar. We start in the early 1920s, before we discovered quasars, or even black holes, a time when we didn't even know other galaxies existed. It seems strange to think that before the 20s, the concept of a greater universe, one filled with more galaxies than our own, was kind of a fringe concept. It wasn't until 1924 when Edwin Hubble proved that the Andromeda Nebula was in fact a galaxy, that we really started to unravel our misconceptions about the universe. We learned that it was filled with thousands of galaxies, along with other curious interstellar phenomena. The quasar was one such phenomena. These faint speckles of light, these faint looking stars were incredibly curious. They seemed to emit huge amounts of radio waves and X-ray radiation, but were almost invisible in the optical wavelengths. What were they? By the 60s, we documented hundreds of them with nothing further to explain what they might be. In 1963, Martin Schmidt was able to measure the spectral lines from Quasar 3C273 using the 5 meter Hale telescope on Mount Palomar. He was able to show that it was emitting the same spectral lines as hydrogen, only severely redshifted. This proved that whatever it was, was receding from us at an immense velocity, around 47,000 kilometers per second. This made it one of the most distant objects we'd ever seen until that point. And, despite how faint it looked to us, also one of the most luminous. Stranger still, this quasar had a brightness that fluctuated on a year by year basis. The only way this could happen is if its physical size was less than a single light year as well, tiny in comparison to that of a galaxy. So whatever this quasar was, it was small, 
and it had a truly unfathomable power for its size. A power we struggled to explain back then. Some physicists did suggest that it could be a supermassive black hole, an extreme example of the black holes predicted by Einstein's general theory of relativity. But the idea of a black hole was still too unreal, too exotic for most, let alone a supermassive one. But as we slowly began disproving the various theories, the various explanations for these quasars, only one was left standing, the ones of Einstein and his predictions of black holes. There was nothing to say that these black holes couldn't reach monumental size, billions of times that of our sun, and there would be no better place for them than at the center of other galaxies. A place where they could feed for millions or even billions of years allowing them to grow to a size equal to that of our entire solar system. To observe these black holes has been one of the greatest challenges of modern astronomy. In fact, it's taken until 2019 to produce the first ever image of a black hole. This image, produced by the Event Horizon Telescope, shows the supermassive black hole at the centre of the Messier 87 galaxy and was the combined work of over 20 countries collaborating from around the globe. It's a splendid image, showing some of the accreting matter orbiting the central shadow of the event horizon. Its mass is estimated to be around 6 billion solar masses, a truly colossal monster. Black holes such as this are known as active galactic nuclei, very energetic cores of galaxies releasing huge amounts of radiation across most frequencies. But not all galactic nuclei are quasars. Quasars tend to be much older and much further away, appearing to lack host galaxies and instead looking like faint stars. In reality, all quasars sit within a host galaxy, and it's only in more recent years with the development of X-ray astronomy and more powerful telescopes that we've even been able to see them. It really is astonishing to think that over such incredible distances, Quasars outshine their entire galaxies by such a large factor, a true testament to how insanely bright and powerful they really are. But why are they so powerful? In short, it's due to their incredible ability to convert mass into energy with astonishing efficiency. Stars like our Sun create energy through nuclear fusion, converting only 0.7% of mass into energy but black holes are far more efficient, capable of converting anywhere up to 40% of the mass they consume into pure energy. They are literally the most efficient engines in the universe, an engine powered by gravity and fueled by stardust, and they use a lot of fuel. Quasars this powerful can consume the mass of the Earth every second, a high price to pay to keep the most powerful engines of the universe running. It's exactly for this reason that we don't really see quasars in the present day. The amount of mass required to sustain them is just too great. Once they run out of stars and gas to feed on, they become inactive, quiescent black holes that gradually grow over time. There's a good chance that many of the black holes at the centre of galaxies were once quasars, maybe even our own, but most are long gone now. The nearest quasar to us is over 600 million light years away, quite a distance, and if we could see it today it would almost certainly be inactive. Quasars really are a remnant of a more chaotic time in our universe. The peak period for their formation was around 10 billion years ago, probably due to how close and messy the universe was back then. Galaxies were much closer together, far less structured than they are today, and there was a lot more stuff just interacting and colliding with each other, much of it ending up landing on the early supermassive black holes that were forming. If life was trying to exist during this period, it surely would have had a tough time, trying to dodge the extinction level event quasar jets being fired at them from every direction. There's even a chance that life on this planet was suppressed by a quasar at some point. The supermassive black hole at the centre of our galaxy, Sagittarius A-star, sits relatively quietly in our galactic core, 
but there's more than a few signs of it feeding vigorously in the past. First of all, the stars which orbit close to it are very young, only 1% of the age of our galaxy. They also orbit in planes, meaning they formed from a single accretion disk. In 2010, the Fermi Gamma Ray Telescope, which observes high energy waves, also found two mysterious lobes of gas protruding from our core by 25,000 light years in either direction. They seem to be emitting a lot of high energy radiation, and although we don't know exactly how they got there, one possibility is that they are energized by jet emissions coming from Sagittarius A star during feeding frenzies. Given the Copernican principle, which states that the present time is not in any way special or unique, it's likely that this cycle of Sagittarius A star feeding has happened many times, even hundreds of times in the past, and that maybe it too was a quasar at some point during the early universe. These days, there's just not enough stuff for it to feed on, nowhere near what a quasar would require. And even if it did flare up, our solar system sits far enough away from the galactic core that we'd be quite safe. There are recent studies to suggest our solar system could have been born much closer to the core than it is today, and that we migrated to where we are now through a series of gravitational kicks. Being much closer to the core, we could have experienced X-ray and ultraviolet bombardment that would have harmed, suppressed or even mutated early life on Earth. But these days, it would take a huge amount of gas and stars, something like a galaxy colliding with us, to really convert our supermassive black hole into a quasar. That's the good news. The bad news is we're headed straight for the Andromeda galaxy. But not for a few billion years. If you are still watching, then you're exactly who I make these videos for. I love reading every comment, and whether you are new to my channel or a subscriber, I'd love to hear from you. What fascinates you about quasars, or even just space in general? Let me know in the comments below, I'm always on the lookout for cool and mysterious topics for the next Spaces Ace video. Until next time, peace.